I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to one of our water and chemical additives tutorials. In this session we're going to talk about wet strength aids. So I guess the best place to start really is to define wet strength. What do we mean by wet strength? Well the definition of wet strength, a sheet is said to have wet strength if its tensile value when wet is at least 15% of the value of the sheet when it's dry. So for example if you measure the tensile strength on a dry piece of paper and its value was say 100 units, if you then soaked a strip of paper before measuring its strength, if the value was 14 or below you would say it has no wet strength. If it had 15 or above, it has some wet strength. So that's the definition, 15%. <clears throat> now, you should really be aware of the different types of wet strength. With dry strength, it's just dry strength and that's the end of it. But with wet strength, there are actually two types of wet strength. There's permanent wet strength, and an example of uh, papers that have permanent wet strength will be things like uh, kitchen towel and hand towels, things that you can rub away or soak up a lot of water and the sheet will not fall apart. Then there is also temporary wet strength. Temporary wet strength, the paper only holds its wet strength for sometimes as little as a few seconds or it may be for three or four hours. But then the sheet will disintegrate as if it had no wet strength at all. And that's a very important feature for some products and we'll see that later on. So it's worth going through the, the wet strength mechanism. What can we do to a sheet to give it wet strength? And there are four strategies and you can use any of them or any combination of them, depending on what you want to achieve. The first one is to protect existing hydrogen bonds. So what wet strength is, or what's the, here's the surface of a fiber, there's the surface of another fiber, here's the hydrogen bonds that are holding it together. When water gets in here, it bursts the hydrogen bonds and they're no longer effective, no longer efficient. They don't bond anymore. So if we could somehow circle these hydrogen bonds with something that's water repellent like wax, then when you wet the sheet of paper, the water cannot get at these hydrogen bonds, cannot get at these hydroxyl groups, so you'll retain the bonding and you've got wet strength. Simple as that. <clears throat> now then, the second wet strength me mechanism is to add to or strengthen existing bonds. So if you could get these two fibres closer together, then the hydroxyl groups will be closer together, the bonding will be stronger, and it will be harder for the water to get in, so your tensile will last just that little bit longer. So that will be a small increase in uh, wet strength. What you can also do is, as you see here, you could increase the number of hydrogen bonds. So there we had six, now we've got seven, eight, nine, ten. We've almost doubled the number of hydrogen bonds. So you would expect it might take water twice as long to break those bonds. And of course, you might have 30 off, you know, if you put the right chemical in, you might end up with 30 or 40 times the number of hydro hydrogen bonds that you normally have. So it might take 30 or 40 times as long. So there are chemicals that you can put in there to give extra 
uh, hydrogen bonding strength and, and which are maybe a little more water tolerant. One such chemical well known is dialdehyde starch. Now if you can remember back to when we talked about the structure of starch and the structure of cellulose it was these glucose rings all stuck together. For starch they all had exactly the same orientation. If you notice here we've broken this particular bond and replaced it with oxygen groups. So we've created this dialdehyde starch and dialdehyde starches are well known for giving what we call temporary like strength. One of the products that definitely needs temporary wet strength is toilet roll, toilet tissue. When you're using the tissue, you want it to have wet strength. You don't want it to fail whilst you're using it. But the moment you finish with it, you throw it down the loo. If it retained its wet strength, then it would block up all the pipes. You'd be calling out the plumber every couple of days to rod out the pipes and clean them for you. So what we need to happen is once the paper is wet after about maybe 20 or 30 seconds you want all the wet strength to disappear and for the sheet to disintegrate into individual fibres and then it can be flushed away simply. That's an example of a very short term wet strength. If you've ever been unfortunate enough to visit a hospital, uh, sometimes you may see uh, you may see little uh, bowls made out of compressed fibre, often a grey in colour. Those are very those are disposable bowls, and the specification for those they need to last at least four hours. That's because if you use them, there's no guarantee that a nurse or someone can take it away immediately so it has to hold whatever liquid you've deposited in it until a staff, member, a staff member can take it away and what they do with it is they put it in the sluice and the sluice is like a giant toilet so again if those bowls didn't break down into individual fibers all the piping from the sluice would get blocked up so you need a, a limit The third mechanism for giving wet strength is to produce bonds that are insensitive to water. Now we often do, we used to do this a long time ago with things like MF resin and UF resin. MF is melamine formaldehyde resin, that's a polymer. Melamine is combined with formaldehyde and then polymerized. UF resin, urea and formaldehyde. Urea is combined with formaldehyde and then polymerized. You rarely see these products these days because of the connection that's been found between formaldehyde and cancer. So in this illustration here, the little dots represent either the MF resin or the UF resin. When you buy it in, you buy it as a dispersion. So it's millions of tiny little particles dispersed in a liquid you put it in the wet end of your machine and you hope that it sticks onto the surface of the fibres. Once you've made the sheet of paper and it's been dried, a reaction starts to happen. We call it a cross-linking reaction. And each of these tiny particles starts to react with the adjacent one until they connect up. So I've just thrown in four here. So you can see that a dot there and a dot here and maybe a dot here, they've all joined together. So some dots on this fibre, some dots on that fibre. Same again here, same again there. So they've all joined up. <clears throat> so they have now produced a bond that is insensitive to water because all these products are very, very hydrophobic. Just to show you what these molecules look like, here we go. The easiest one is say urea formaldehyde. That's urea molecule. This is a formaldehyde molecule, one of the simplest organic molecules. You heat them together, 
and you get this thing here, urea formaldehyde, and then it undergoes a polymerization reaction and you get these uh, very long chains of urea formaldehyde. Just to show you that um, melamine formaldehyde, well, this is the final product, this is the equivalent of this. And as you can see, it looks a lot more complicated. It's a ring-like structure rather than a, a straight structure. And one of the things I want you to notice here is nitrogen. There's nitrogen everywhere. One thing to remember is that all wet strength reactions are based on nitrogen chemistry. So whenever you hear wet strength, you should automatically be thinking, oh, something to do with nitrogen. So, as I said a moment ago, this cure only starts to happen once the sheet, pardon me, once the sheet has been dried. And interestingly, it's a pretty slow reaction, as you can see. This is days. It takes approximately 21 days to be fully cured. So urea formaldehyde was the first one and the sort of cheaper of the two or least expensive of the two. That gives initially a lot worse wet strength than melamine formaldehyde. But over this period of three weeks, they both end up at round about the same place. What that should tell you, what that should ring an alarm bell with broke. Because if you're producing these sorts of papers and you produce broke, and everybody does produce broke, it may be broke off the machine, it may be uh, material that's been rejected by quality control, it may be offcuts and remnants from the slitters, they will always be broke. What this tells you is that the sooner you get it back in solution, the easier it's going to be. If you can get it back in dispersed in the same shift, it will break down really easily because you don't have much wet strength developed. If you wait three weeks or more, then the wet strength is fully developed. It's really difficult to tear that piece of paper apart now. So you're going to use a lot more energy, so it's going to cost you more. And you're going to have to be more violent with it and so it will damage more fibres and you'll end up with a much shorter fibre length. And as we've said in earlier videos, the longer the fibres, the more crossovers, the stronger the sheet. Therefore, the shorter the fibres, the fewer the crossovers, the weaker the sheet is going to be. So it's one thing you should strive to do. Any broke that contains wet strength agents, get it back in solution or in dispersion as quickly as you possibly can. <clears throat> as I said, there's been associations between formaldehyde and cancer, so a lot of people have turned away from those products and they've gone on to this material here. Pretty complicated chemical name, no one ever calls it this name, this is its Sunday name, Poly amido-amine epichlorhydrin. Some people use its initials, PAAE. Some people even squash it down some more and just say PAE. So those are all the chemical names. Probably the most common trade name for this material is chymine. So most people have heard of chymine. And if you look again, this is also full of nitrogen. So that goes along with our rule that all wet strength materials are based on nitrogen chemistry. Now the big difference between the other one, I'll just go back a moment. If you, if you look here, there are no charges associated with this molecule and there are no charges associated with this molecule. But with this molecule, 
you can see N plus, N plus, N plus, N plus everywhere. So this molecule carries with it a big plus charge. And that means it's one of those rare materials that will act as both a functional aid and a process aid. The wet strength value is the functional aid part of this molecule. The fact that it's full of plus charges means it will attract a lot of the negatively charged fibres and therefore it will act as a retention aid. So that's why it's also a process aid. Because it does attract a lot of fibres, it will also be poor, give poor formation. So when you're using a material like this, you need to remember it's really good because it will fasten itself onto the fibre, pluses and minuses attract. The negative side is it will give poor formation. And the fourth and last wet strength mechanism is this one. Make a network of water insensitive material that entangles the fibres. And the perfect example of this is the tea bag. A lot of tea bags, the furnish is a mixture not just of wood pulp and manila, but also some man made fibres like polyethylene or polypropylene, nylon, something like that. And during the manufacturing, the paper manufacturing process, the web is heated up to such a degree that these man-made fibres start to melt and fuse together. And then we cool them down and they've actually welded. You've got a welded matrix. You've then got two interpenetrating matrices. You've got a matrix of natural fibres entangled in a matrix of man-made fibres. And that's one of the reasons, just one of the reasons, why tea bags do not fall apart when you pour boiling water over them. There are other things available at the moment, but uh, this is an example for this particular product. So thank you for uh, watching this particular video. Uh, it's one I enjoy doing. I hope you found it useful and informative. And uh, please feel free to ask any questions or make any comments. And I look forward to seeing you in one of my other videos. Goodbye for now.